Coming up on LUTV News, three men are charged in an East St. Louis shooting that injured seven people. Plus, the first of many 9-11 documents are released. Find out what it reveals about the tragedy. And a video of a student removing flags from a college campus goes viral. Those stories and more ahead on LUTV News. Welcome to this edition of LUTV News. I'm Selena Tuileva. A standoff in Arnold has ended peacefully. Police say the suspect in the hostage si situation surrendered before, just before noon. Authorities say the situation started just before 3.30 this morning. They say they were called to the 3,000 block of Adaya Lane for a disturbance. Police say the male suspect initially had two women hostage. They are now both safe. So far, police are not releasing the suspect's name or possible motive. Three men are charged in Thursday night's shooting that set, left seven people ho hospitalized. The suspects D'Angelo Higgs, Cartez Beard, and Lorenzo Bruce were arrested by Illinois State Police early Friday morning. One of the victims was a, a three-year-old boy. Their bond was set to $950,000. The city of East St. Louis is under a mandatory curfew from midnight to 6 a.m. in order to prevent f further violence. A teen was arrested after bringing a loaded gun into McClure Senior High School on Friday. School authorities say the teen did not go to the school, but was allowed in by another student. Authorities received a tip and quickly arrested the teen. The school was placed under immediate lockdown, and the school says they are reviewing their security procedures to make sure this doesn't happen again. It's unclear why the teen brought the gun into the school. The Federal Bureau of, in F F F the Federal Bureau of Investigation releases the first of several declassified 9-11 documents. The document gives details on the FBI's work to investigate suspected Saudi officials and agents who assisted in the attack. Within the documents, it is confirmed that those investigated did assist with the attack 20 years ago. Those investigated primarily gave assistance for travel, lodging, and financing. There were multiple meetings of all these people leading up to the attack. More documents regarding 9-11 are to be declassified and released over the next six months. Straight ahead on LED TV News, a video of a student removing flags on a college campus goes viral. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than 3 billion meals serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. Ah! Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. A video shows a Washington University student removing thousands of flags on a campus on Saturday. The group called 
the college Republicans placed nearly 3,000 flags on the Mudfield lawn on Friday as a tribute to 9-11. The next day, a male student collected the flags and placed them in the large bag. The student left before campus police arrived, but the bags were fa later found. Within four hours, all the flags were planted, replanted. Hours later, the student went on social media saying, he had no intention of removing the flags from the Mudfield area, and my full protest did not have the chance to be actualized. My planned protest was to place the bags of flags on Mudfield along with various statistics explaining the human cost of 9-11. University officials condemn the student's actions but are not saying if he will face any disciplinary actions. Alton School District is seeing a rising number of students testing positive for COVID-19. The Alton School District suspended says last, 20, last week 26 students and one staff member tested positive. The superintendent also says another 64 students are still in quarantine. The district says they are in process of implementing new safety measures to prevent the spread of COVID among its students. The school district received up to $33 million in pandemic funds to deal with COVID-19. The General Motors plant in Wentzville is, will be closed for an additional week. The shutdown was supposed to end on September 20th, but now extended for one more week. The cause of the shutdown is due to a computer chip shortage that also affected other industries nation nationwide. Wentzville's assembly plant is one of the three General Motors plants to be temporarily shuttered. More than 20,000 people came out to experience the third annual Taste of Black St. Louis last weekend. The City Foundry St. Louis hosted the event. It offered everything from food and entertainment to shopping. The Taste of Black St. Louis started with 45 vendors. Three years later, they are now up to about 90 vendors. Founder Aisha James says it's our mission to provide festival opportunities through accessibility, affordability, and sustainability. The final week of summer isn't letting up on the temperatures, so when will we see any relief this week? I'll let you know after the break. Here are your AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. First, form a caregiving team. Create a list of people in your family and friend network who can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of supplies in your loved one's home. Try to have a two week supply of essential items. Make a list of the care recipient's medications and medical contacts. Be sure to have prescriptions on hand and ask the pharmacist for an extra 30-day supply. Make a plan to stay connected. To prevent social isolation, set up available technology to help loved ones stay connected and schedule regular chats. Finally, maintain your own self-care. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety and have a backup plan for care in case you become ill. For more caregiving tips during the coronavirus pandemic, go to aarp.org slash caregiving. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org. Hopefully you didn't turn the air conditioning off this weekend because we are in store for one more hot week of summer. A low pressure system pushed through the area over the weekend, but rain stayed away. There is a high pressure system holding up in the Rockies, which could delay some much needed relief. As we take a look around the viewing area, temperatures are holding steady across the board. Clear skies and plenty of sun and 90 degrees in St. Louis and Maryland Heights. And across the river in St. Charles, St. Peter's and O'Fallon. Moving to the five day forecast, sun will dominate the week, keeping temperatures near 90. We have already hit the high of 90 Monday and Tuesday we reach 90 again with a low of 72. Clouds drift in and cool things down Wednesday as the high reaches just 81. 
The sunshine returns Thursday as temperatures rise back into the high 80s. Highs on Thursday and Friday hit 84 and 88. The evenings do start to cool down considerably this week as they dip into the mid 60s starting Wednesday. For LUTV News, I'm Michael Wagon Connect. Back to you, Selena. Tropical Storm Nichols is bringing along heavy storms to Texas and Louisiana areas. The Hurricane Center says Nichols formed on Sunday in the Gulf of Mexico. The center says it could produce from 16 to 20 inches of rain across the coast of Texas and Louisiana. The NHC says Nichols wind gusts are clocking in at 60 miles per hour and the storm is moving north at 12 miles per hour. The center says Nichols ex is expected to straighten, strengthen until it reaches the northwest part of the Gulf Coast Monday night or early Tuesday morning. Coming up, the Cardinals inch closer to a wild card spot with a win over the Reds. That and more still to come on LUTV News. certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just wanted to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, uh, Pop, do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. The Redbirds have now won four of their last five with a win Sunday over the Cincinnati Reds. Third baseman Nolan Arenado clobbered a two-run home run in the first inning, his 31st of the year, and that's all pitcher J.A. Happ needed. Happ threw over five scoreless innings, striking out four in the process. With Sunday's win, the Cardinals are now only one game back of the second wildcard spot behind the Cincinnati Reds and the San Diego Padres. Pitcher Adam Wainwright takes the mound Monday night as the Cardinals head to New York to face the Mets. With the season opener right around the corner, the St. Louis Blues are getting ready to take the ice. After a disappointing playoff exit last season, the Blues look to bounce back as preseason games are less than two weeks away. Now that fans will be back in the building, the NHL is preparing for a full 82-game season as last year was shortened due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Blues take on the Minnesota Wild in their first preseason game on Saturday, September 25th. Their season opener is October 16th against the Colorado Avalanche. The first Sunday of NFL football for the 2021 season is in the books. Let's recap some of the scores from around the league. The number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, threw three touchdown passes and three picks in the Jaguars' loss to the Texans. And even though they may not be in New Orleans, the Saints showed up ready to play, destroying the Green Bay Packers in a 38-3 blowout win. The Chiefs rode a second-half comeback to beat the Cleveland Browns in a thriller 33-29 while the Cincinnati Bengals won on a game-winning field goal in overtime against the Minnesota Vikings 27-24. Lastly, Matthew Stafford dominated in his Rams debut, routing the Chicago Bears in a 34-14 victory on Sunday Night Football. That's all for sports. For LUTV News, I'm Jonathan Camp. The NFL also marked a historic milestone over the weekend. 
Maya Chaka became the first African American to officiate an NFL game. Chaka was a line judge during the game between the New York Jets and the Carolina Panthers. Chaka said, this historic moment to me is an honor and it's a privilege that I've been chosen to represent women and women of color in the most popular sport in America, proving that I can defy and overcome the odds. The NFL announced that Chaka will be a line judge for the rest of the 2021 season. Fort Zumwalt South seniors decided to sell t-shirts to honor what Wentzville's fallen Marine, Jared Smits. The student designed the shirts with his name and his title, the front, on the back, front and the back reads, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. All the proceeds from the shirts will go to towards Schmidt's Memorial Fund, which is used to help military families in the future. Schmidt was one of the 13 U.S. troops killed in the suicide bombing at the Kabul Af Afghanistan airport last month. That's it for this edition of LATV News. I'm Selena Tuliapa. Thanks for joining us.